Hey, do you ever watch a YouTube video? Well, yeah, you're watching one right now. But do you ever watch one and think, man, if only I could do that. So you try, and it kind of works. So you continue at it, and you keep going, and you find, man, this is awesome. Well, that happened to me. I was watching in Texas, specifically one of his jet engine videos. I thought, man, he really has some great ingenuity and design genius. This video is not about him. This is about turbojet engines, specifically making one without any prior experience. I may not know what I'm doing with thermodynamics, but I do know what I'm doing in CAD. So I got to work, and I made V1. This engine really sucked, if you could even call it an engine. And it inspired me to try and make V2, and then V3. This is hopefully the first engine I will get to test, and is almost ready. It only needs a bit more work, specifically turning the 3D plastic into metal. With version 2, I have every part both in CAD and physically. For version 3, this is not its final form, but let's now jump to the end, so without any further ado, let's go over my attempts at a turbojet engine. Version 1, it was basically straight from Integza, copy and paste. Inspired from his video, I went to the description and downloaded everything I could and printed it out. I attempted to do every aspect the same as his, although I did not really have the funding or experience or pretty much any aspect of building a turbojet engine. It got pretty far but lacked a proper housing, bearings, welds, and pretty much every part of the engine. I got it to spin up with some compressed air, but it never really ran after that. I must warn you, dear viewer, that if you are a welder or have ever welded before, you should probably skip to this part of the video or close your eyes. These welds are so bad you may spontaneously combust. Three, two, one. Here's my first ever attempt at a combustion chamber and welding. My welds were so shoddy that it probably would have just blown up. Although with this engine I did find some pretty nice steel tubes that I will continue to use as fuel injection and coolant lines. Besides that, this was a total failure. From the ashes of this failed engine, I spent time off and on working in CAD and in real life until I got to the point where I could call it V2, and this is how I started my second engine. I'm calling this one V2 because it still uses parts from Integs's turbine and compressor, but the rest is entirely my design. In trying to build the first version of the engine, I found that the housing was such a hard part to make. It's either really expensive or very complicated due to the precision needed, but I had an idea of using a camping propane tank, and this was the basis of my engine, and I got to work in CAD again. It turned out pretty good, but not great, but definitely a place to build off of. The goal for this engine is for it to be easy to assemble or take apart, to be able to run for a long time, and have a high thrust to weight. Before I get into the technical side of how the engine works, let's take a quick look at how each part of a turbojet engine works. With a turbojet engine, looking at this diagram, you can see the intake, the compressor, the combustion chamber, the turbine, and the exhaust. At the speed a plane flies, the air would be moving too quickly for a flame to ignite. So we compress the air, because high pressure air holds a lot more energy than low pressure air. After the compressor, the air is at such a high pressure and it's moving so slowly that you can ignite a flame in it. This is done in the combustion chamber. Once the air is ignited, it flows through the stator and then through a turbine. The stator guides the flame so that the turbine can spin. The turbine is connected to a shaft which drives the compressor. Then we exhaust the hot air through a nozzle at the end. This gives you a self-sustaining forward thrust. Back to my engine. Those basic principles of how a turbojet works can be seen with my example here. I have a three-stage compressor, followed by a combustion chamber, then a stator, and a turbine. I also have some other stuff here, but let's move over to the CAD model. When I cut this in half, you can see the plate here between the compressor and the combustion chamber. This plate has a coolant path and a fuel line. It's also going to act as an insulation wall for the 3D printed compressor, because I do intend to continue using 3D printing for as much as I can with this engine. Due to the design guide that I gave myself, this engine is relatively simple to put together and is only made in a few simple parts. It goes the compressor, the coolant plate, the temperature wall, the combustion chamber, the stator housing, and the stator. Then I can slide in the turbine and lock in the compressor at the front. As you can see here on my example of the turbine and compressor, I do not have threading and it is welded in place. 
For future attempts at this engine, it will be threaded so that way I can easily take the engine apart and put it back together when needed. So where am I now? Well I'm on V3. V3 is a hybrid of V2 with improved parts. Every project has to start somewhere, and V2 was a good foot in the door with some design principles that I will carry over, but there are some major issues such as dead room. When swapping the combustion chambers, you can see V2 has about 15mm of dead room, and the stator sat too far back, so V3 moves it up and shrinks the total footprint of the engine. I also borrowed the turbine and compressor design from Integza. I plan to make my own, but I'm still working through some calculations. For now, I will use his as a stand-in. So what? This engine may not be running today, but with continued work, I plan to get it at least spinning in the next couple weeks. I will be posting my CAD files for V2 for free in the description, but for V3, I'd really like to finish and polish them and make sure that I can at least get it to spin up. A much longer assembly video will be released when I get it running, or at least I can show some footage of it blowing up. This video is really about getting the idea out there, and spreading the word that you can just try and build things, even if you don't have all the right tools or knowledge. You just have to be willing to learn. I will continue to work on this engine, so if you like what you see, drop a like and subscription, because there will be more videos coming.